maybe 10, 12 years. I don't want to talk to you about Angelo Angela. And we know she was in Jamestown College in 1625. Nobody knows when she arrived. Jamestown has put on this elaborate, you didn't mention it, Jamestown has put on this elaborate presentation that she arrived on the treasurer in August of 1619. And you did not mention that tonight. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. Yeah, she did. Bear, bear with me. I, I, I'm not the most confident. No, you said there might have been four or five no, got off the ship. No, no, no. Let me come to my document. Um, and I don't know how it's there. Okay. Bullseye. 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 That's 1625. And she's also there, which she's appears in, in 24. Okay, but it doesn't prove when she arrived. Well, yes, it does, because it says she arrived on the treasurer. And the treasurer was here in 19, and then it went to Bermuda. And okay, but see, the question that I'm raising is that you are one of the few Jamestown historians who say she got off the ship, where the rest of the historians say she went to Bermuda on the treasury came back in 1620. I know. And, and that, see, that's why I did the research I did, because so, I knew that it wasn't, it okay. wasn't reasonable. And, and so that so, other people got off. Yeah, so the, the question is that there are a lot of historians who have seen the same documents that you've seen. Uh, uh, there, yeah. there, there, so, so, it's, yeah, it's, 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 my, uh, it's my practice that a lot of historians can see the same document and come up with different theories. All right, who's next? Catherine. Here she is. Can y'all hear me? I don't like mine. Okay. <laughs> um, I am from Florida. I'm a genealogist, first and foremost. And to begin with, I want to say thank you so much for everything. I have read your work at least three times over. I have used it immensely in my studies and my work. So I'm going to say thank you, number one, for that. Um, I want to ask you, though, other than Virginia in England, have you looked into any other archives internationally? Because I've found information in the Netherlands, in Spain, in Portugal, in the Philippines, in Japan, and I'm wondering if you've, if you've looked into that at all. I have a second question, too, <laughs> if you'll apply me, um, because I think that's a yes or no. Um, what, as a genealogist, I look at primary documents as you do. When you have two primary documents that contradict one another, what do you do? Because I have a document, 1626, it's a primary document. It's handwritten just like these, it's dated. And in 1626, it says the treasurer was still sitting in the bay in Bermuda. So I'm wondering where he wrote out. I also have a document that says that there were 29 that got off the ship. That was from John Dutton, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and from um, Belt. Mm -hmm. So how do we decipher, or what is your thoughts on that, of who we throw out and who we keep? What I do, what I do when I find records, for example, when I went through the court testimony of these various individuals, and I didn't mention tonight every single one I looked at either. I will admit I did more than that. Um, I did find that some people said 25, the one man did say 29. Having, this this will sound very odd to you, but once upon a time, I was called upon to testify in a grand jury. And I was asked to say when I had gotten a phone call from a certain person. Well, most of us go about living our lives without looking at our watches and taking notes. And what I was going to do when this person, um, who was being accused of murder, actually, it was really important that I give it every brain cell. And I could say, well, it was while well, 11 o'clock news was going on that I got this phone call. You know, but that was, well, what I could do. Other people had different recollections. So you have things on both sides. What I was trying to investigate and really came right down on it, and it, it's indisputable, is that the treasurer came here. We know that Angelo got off and that um, the treasurer then went to Bermuda. Everybody is in agreement on that. 
and the treasurer sank there. The armament was removed and it sank there. And whether initially it had 28 or had 30, um, I'm not going to say, oh, it's absolutely this or that. But I did conclusively prove that the treasurer did not go to sea again after it reached Bermuda and that it didn't sink there. Even though that they still saw it sitting in the Bay of 1626? It says in more than one document, like these five pieces of testimony talk about But there's about only one that says it sank, to my knowledge, because I've seen all five. I know what you're talking about. Because Coleman was wrong. I threw all those out because I can relate them to Robert Rich. But the issue is it never it never came back here, and we know that our people that, as we have traditionally believed, arrived here at Old Point Comfort, um, that indeed that did happen. And that was that was the goal. Um, I also looked at the court testimony from not just this set of records, but another set. And uh, there were, when the treasurer went to sea, when Arnold sent it out, um, and it ended up going on its piratical thing, he outfitted it with some of the late Lord Delaware's servants. Right. So they were the ones that got off. Um, something I didn't mention because this is a lot of material to cover in an evening. But there was a master's mate aboard the treasurer that was taken off and rather, rather enthusiastically, shall we say, interrogated at Jamestown. So um, again, this puts the lie to what people have been saying that um, nobody got off here. Can I, I ask you one other question about the 20 and odd. Do you really feel that there was 20 something that got off the white line? Because the white line was documented in Bermuda also on August 12th, selling 14 Africans by John Daly Burke in 1802. Well see, what we don't know, and I think it's important, I think it's always important to be honest and admit what we don't know. And um, when you look at the fact that we know that an aggregate of 25 men were taken from the two ships when Independence went off, captured, we don't know whether, let's say, of that 25 that you might have had 17 from the White Lion and eight from the Treasurer. We just really don't know. The records don't tell us. Now, they're brought back. We don't know how many really were removed from the San Juan Batista. But when they get back, we don't know how many, whether there was a 50-50 split or not. And I'm just not willing to speculate. Um, yeah, I understand it was 60 from the records from well, um, Eagle Sluter's receipt. Yeah, people assume that. But there's ambiguity there, too, because you've got the 24 young boys, too. And one of the records absolutely says that the, the uh, records that um, the boys were aboard and taken to Jamaica after the attack. Right. And yet others say, you know, another one says not. So um, we have to just, when there's conflicting testimony, we have to just say to us conflicting testimony. Were you able to find anything in the other archives? I have worked in the archives in England and so on. I have actually spent up in the British archives and all that, but I was not investigating this particular subject. I did that when I was working at Jamestown and I worked at Oxford and Cambridge. I've worked in the Bermuda Archives and the Huntington Library. And so early 17th century has been a, a long-standing issue of interest of mine. All right, we're gonna, I'm going to, I'm seeing a couple